What's going on YouTube? Probably the first time you guys actually got to see my true figure and face. Uh, outside of maybe catching it, you know, a glimpse here or there on a video that I may have uh, just neglected to take myself out of. Not that I ever tried to hide myself, I just never went out there and, uh, and tried to show myself until I got the new camera. So I figured I'd do a different little kind of video for you guys today. A uh, video that I wanted to go ahead and do here today is going to be basically on the gear that I own. Um, and and kind of give you some discussions on maybe some cheaper options, some more expensive options of some things that I have. And uh, hopefully educate you guys on maybe some options that you may want to end up going with if you're still undecided on what gear options to go. Uh, three main things that I always say to new riders that may have just gotten their first bike that they want to immediately try to get as soon as possible uh, is in terms of safety gear is a motorcycle helmet, motorcycle gloves, and then a riding jacket. So those are the three things I wanted to focus on first in the videos and then I'll go to the other things that I own as well uh, towards the end uh, and try to give you some discussions on, on different things. So let's go ahead and start with the helmets. I own two different helmets. Uh, one's an HJC and one's a Shoei, so we'll go ahead and go ahead and get into the first one. All right, so the first helmet I have here is the Shoei GT Air. It comes with the integrated visor, which is super nice feature for me because I like to ride uh, for long times during the day in terms of uh, 7 o'clock in the morning till 2 in the morning the following night. So there's times when I need to have light, uh, clear visor, and times when I want to have a tinted visor. So before when I owned the HJC or helmets before, I would carry two separate visors to change out throughout the day. Uh, this visor or this uh, feature on this helmet allows me to carry one visor, one helmet, and, uh, and get both features. It is a very comfortable helmet. Obviously, it's the helmet that I motovlog with now. Um, it does give me nice comfort. It's a good tight fit uh, as well as it's lightweight, and uh, it's very aerodynamic. The vents in the top allow air to flow really good and the, uh, the mouth vent is very good as well. All right, here's the HJC helmet that I have on. It's got the, uh, the different type of logo or different type of design on it. Um, the helmet is a little different than the showy. Um, it's shaped a little different in my head, um, but I do like it because it was a fairly cheap helmet. I think I only spent $150, $170 on this helmet as compared to 500 plus for the showy GT Air. Uh, downside of this helmet, again, is I had to carry two separate visors for the long days. Um, as far as comfort, uh, the Shoei is definitely more comfortable. Not that this helmet's uncomfortable, but uh, that's why I prefer the Shoei. But I got this as my backup in case something A was to happen to that helmet, or you know if I'm cleaning the, uh, if I'm washing out the inside or something, uh, the liner, then I need to wear a different helmet. I go to this helmet. Alrighty, guys, that was my two helmets that I currently own, the HJC and the Shoei. Uh, hopefully, you guys got a little bit of a comparison of both. Uh, next thing I want to go to is riding gloves because I honestly in my personal preference I think that's probably the second most important thing that you should own is a good set of riding gloves uh, because in a crash situation the first thing that goes down is your hands. If your hands get rashed up from road rash you are completely incapable of doing pretty much anything um, because you use your hands for everything. If you get rashed on your legs or your stomach or your back or something or your elbows or forearms you can still function for the most part. You might have some discomfort, but you're still able to function. Uh, with rash on your hands, you're pretty much in, incapacitated. So we'll go ahead and uh, show you both pair of those gloves. Alrighty, so here are both sets of gloves here. I've got the speed and strength, just regular standard type gloves. Um, I wear these primarily when I'm just going out cruising, uh, just riding around the neighborhood to the local store or something, or just going around moto vlogging. Um, they're probably the most comfortable gloves I've ever owned. I think I spent $40 to purchase them. Uh, good airflow through the knuckles, and uh, they just breathe really well, and they're very comfortable. Uh, they are all leather in the palms, so it does give you a, a sense of protection there. Um, so that's why I enjoy these gloves. Now, these are my full gauntlet gloves. I wear these when I go on long rides. They've got the full gauntlet protection, leather palms, carbon fiber knuckles. I got these on closeout. I think initially they were $150, but I got them on closeout last year for $15. A good price there at Iron Pony, so I couldn't turn that down. And uh, when I wear in the full race suit uh, on my long rides, these are the gloves that I wear. I'll also wear these sometimes during uh, some colder days when I want to make sure that no air can go in between this and, and one of the jackets that I'm wearing. So it allows me to, uh, to prevent air from going up there. Both, again, very good gloves. These are more comfortable than these, but uh, these offer definitely more protection. 
And uh, hey, all in all, but I, you know, that's why I got two set, different sets of gloves for that. All right, and the third thing, so basic starter setup that I feel is the most important is a good riding jacket. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, I've got four riding jackets plus my leather suit that I wanna show off to you guys here uh, so you guys can see. So without further ado, let me go ahead and start off with the first leather jacket. All right, so this is my most common riding jacket that I use. Um, it is a full leather jacket, non-perforated. It's got decent airflow through the shoulders here, but it does have 16 vents throughout the jacket. That's why I enjoy this jacket the most. It's good for hot weather and cold weather. In the hot weather, I just take the liner out, open up all 16 vents, and in my personal opinion, it breathes almost as good as a mesh jacket. In the winter time, I've got the interior liner here, which goes into the arms, shut up all the vents, and I don't feel any wind whatsoever. This is probably my overall favorite riding jacket for my normal riding season, uh, just because it's the most comfortable to me as well as it's got the uh, utility of both cold and warm weather. All right, this is my next leather jacket. I don't wear this jacket too often. It's kind of a very cheap jacket, but I like it because it's got all the racing patches and stuff on it. It, uh, you know, I never really wore this to ride. I just keep it hung up and it's, you know, just for kind of keepsakes uh, per se, but it does have the utility that if I wanted to ride with it, I could. All right, so this is my third jacket. It's a field shear perforated leather jacket. Um, this jacket I've had the longest. It was my very first leather jacket that I picked up. Uh, it is perforated. I lost the liner to it, so that's the reason why I don't wear it as much as I used to, uh, just because I don't have the ability to shut it off, uh, shut off cold weather into the jacket. Now, if it's gonna stay 75 plus the entire day, this is definitely the jacket that I prefer to wear just because of how comfortable the uh, leather's really broken in and uh, it's perforated, so it's got great ventilation. Alrighty, and last, and certainly not least, is my just standard textile jacket. It's a speed and strength. I think I paid a hundred and some dollars for it. Very, very inexpensive jacket. Lightweight, super comfortable, um, vents well with the vents. Um, I wear this jacket if I'm just very casually going out and I don't want to put on a heavy jacket. Uh, you know, if, if it's kind of windy, sometimes I'll put this jacket on because it does Block the wind pretty good, um, and uh, you know if I'm going out and I just temp, you know just don't want to throw anything too heavy on, uh, a lot of times I'll just throw this on. I've had this jacket the longest. It offers the probably the least amount of, of uh, protection than the other jackets. Uh, that's why I tend to stay away from this one. But again, if you're just getting started out, you're a new rider, something like this is going to be the perfect jacket that you're going to want to wear because uh, it's cheap, it's lightweight, it's not going to get in the way and uh, it'll get you started. Eventually you'll probably progress into a leather jacket or suit, but for starters, it's the perfect jacket. I just went over all four of the jackets that I have, two helmets, two sets of gloves. Next thing I guess would be something that I don't necessarily deem needs to happen right away uh, if, it, if you're financially unable to. Of course, if you have the finances and you're able to afford it, I definitely would recommend always getting a pair of riding pants. Um, that way you can offer the most protection to your legs. Jeans, well, for un contrary to our most popular belief, don't offer next to any protection in the event of a crash. They will completely shred on you unless they're Kevlar and uh, they don't offer much uh, impact comfort either. So getting a pair of motorcycle pants, whether they're leather pants, textile or mesh, that has some armor in them, or even a pair of Kevlar jeans is gonna be better than just regular jeans. So here I've got a pair of just my riding pants here. They are Scorpion Drafter 2s, I believe. They're just a nice little Scorpion pant. They got some knee protection, some butt protection, textile jack, or textile or mesh type, uh, type material. That's just gonna give you some protection more than a set of jeans are. Um, I typically wear these to like a bike night or something when I may go on a little bit of a journey locally, but I'm not going too far. Uh, but yeah, they're just a nice pair of riding pants. They're super comfortable and they definitely allow for great airflow so you're not getting too sweaty down underneath there. So last but not least in terms of protective gear, I wanted to discuss some of the riding boots that I have. I've got two different pairs. One pair I use typically for just riding around locally or just going somewhere like to the store and I want to be able to walk around comfortably in. And the second pair is going to be the pair that I wear with the racing suit or days that I'm going on full long rides where I want to make sure I got the most protection in case I go down. Guys, here they are. So here's my Alpine Stars Fast Track or Fast Lane boot. 
It's just a standard over the ankle boot. You've got some toe slider protection here. Not replaceable, so you don't want to drag it too often. But in case you do, it does give you a little more protection than just a standard boot would give you. Gives you the over the ankle protection, which is something that's ideal for motorcycle riding. As well as it's similar to a very comfortable boot that's not going to stand out too much. Uh, if you're just walking around through a store or something like a bike night or a restaurant or something that you may just want to have something a little under the radar and you don't want to be too obvious. Um, so that's why I got this boot. And then here is my full race boot, uh, which I wear with the suit. And on days when I'm going for full protection, it's obviously got the full ankle support, replaceable toe slider there. So in case you're dragging your, your, your outside of your boot, you can replace that for down the road. I got these for about 179 and these for about 90 so these are definitely going to be cheaper if you're looking for something very affordable, uh, but if you're looking for protection and money isn't a concern, you're definitely going to want to look at getting a full-size race boot. And this comes with a lifetime warranty, uh, which is what I liked about it. That's why I chose the Sadichi brand for the boot, um, it, outside of normal wear and tear, so if it's just... If you're just using it a lot and over the course of, you know, and then eventually it just breaks down because you've worn it so much, they're not going to replace it. But if something was to happen and they broke or something, uh, they would replace the boot for you lifetime guaranteed. That's why I like this boot so much. So here's my full race suit, guys. It is the uh, one-piece leather suit, perforated. Uh, it's only a built suit, so it's not that it wasn't that expensive. I think I spent $250 on it compared to uh, your competitors like Alpine Stars or Dionysus. Where you're looking at 750 to you know well beyond you know 2k 5k even if you get into a really high end suit. I don't race on the track or I don't go do I want to start doing like occasional novice track day, um, but nothing too crazy as far as racing. So I don't need a heavy 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 duty suit. That's why I picked this up for a good price. Um, it's good for the long rides. It's very comfortable. You know you don't feel after a long ride. Sometimes the gear can take its toll on you. This really stays compact to my body, keeps the wind very consistent. It's not buffeting you real bad. Um, it's not blowing up on you and, and giving you like the Michelin Man look, uh, which can abuse you over a long ride. So you're not fighting the suit uh, compared to when I used to wear the two-piece option where I'd have a leather jacket and the riding pants. Sometimes you could fight the jacket riding up and wanting to choke you out a little bit or something like that. Um, and then, you know, the riding pants. Only downside to doing the riding suit is if you get off the bike and you want to go inside to a gas station, sometimes you're going to look kind of goofy walking like that. You know, that, that, that got over really quickly. Um, no goofier than when somebody's in their motor vlogging at a stoplight or something. So, I like the one-piece suit. It's a very cheap suit that I got, but it does the job. It gives me the most protection from any of the other gear that options that I have. And probably if you're running a two-piece option, this is going to give you more protection than that too. Um, that's why I go with this, uh, this option. Oh, the sun's coming in right on me. So that pretty much winds up all of the safety gear options that I currently own uh, in terms of riding jackets, pants, helmets, gloves, stuff like that. Some of the other optional accessories that I have are these options right here that I use. Uh, something that you probably want to consider picking up over the course of your time of acquiring gear. Uh, so I'll start with the three items here, which are the heat out options. I just picked these up from the local uh, Cycle Gear. They're very cheap because I got them out of season. I think I spent like $15, $9, and then I got this for free when I bought two of these items. These are just your heat out pants and shirt that you'd wear underneath like the riding suit or your gear. It's very good. It wicks the sweat away, and it uses that to help keep you cool on hot days. So I like to wear this under the jacket or the, the suit, and, and it keeps so I can wash this, and I don't get too much, you know, too dirtiness or too much uh, sweat or grime on the, on the suit or pants or whatnot. So that's why I like to keep these. And then when I wash them, I wash them separate from all my other clothes, and it keeps you from ruining your regular, regular style clothes. Next option I have here is the heat out, or I'm sorry, the freeze out, which is the exact same thing as the heat out, except for the opposite season. They're just a pair of long johns. Perfect things with these is they have a little uh, thing that when you put them over your, when you put your pants on, there's a strap that goes underneath your bottom of your foot, which keeps the pant leg down against the bottom of your ankle so that it doesn't ride up as you're riding. I really like that so you can't, as you're riding and you're bending your knees at, at the, at, you're bending at the knees tendency other pair of pants have a tendency to ride up 
when that happens is you got you can get some exposure and in the cold weather that turns into uh, to a miserable experience which is why I like to wear these riding pants last thing I had in there that I forgot to show you guys one of the options is a helmet liner so it's a heat out helmet liner that you put on and it keeps your your head cool with the wind that passes through the helmet and in the winter months I wear this instead um, it's a balaclava with a good fleece neck protector keeps the wind off your neck which is super vital and uh, you don't understand how much more enjoyable cold weather riding is and when if you don't you don't know what it's like if you're not wearing something like this so you always want to have something protecting your neck because you can really lose a lot of body temperature riding in the cold weather if you got cold air on your neck and finally towards the conclusion of this video here i just got rain gear that i want to show you guys here i just got your typical rain gear pants rain gear jacket uh it goes over both your riding pants and riding uh jacket just completely 100 percent waterproof uh this these are the cheap version i think i picked up the entire set for like 39 bucks uh, which came with the boot covers as well um the boot covers are pretty cool oh, whoops boot covers are pretty good goes over top of the boot allows you to strap it in and then you can put your riding uh, your pant over top of it keeps your boots completely waterproof and your pants completely waterproof also got a pair of liners for my gloves as well just goes over top of the gloves keeps those waterproof as well perfect for long trips I don't typically bring this too much unless I'm going on a long trip uh, whether it's the deals gap or somewhere else I, I tend to bring them um, you know, getting stuck in the rain kind of sucks, but you know, you don't necessarily have to wear rain gear. That would be the last thing I would pick up if you're looking at acquiring gear in that terms. Alrighty guys, well I appreciate you guys watching the video here. Hopefully I gave you guys some good insight on the gear that I currently own. Y you know, some of the stuff is not very expensive, so I, I usually try to find the affordable stuff. Yes, there are better options out there, but you're going to pay for them. Um, look for a video similar to videos like this where I'm kind of talking to you guys. Maybe I'll show you uh, how I edit my videos or you know how I set up my camera as far as the mode of vlogging camera and stuff like that so you guys can, commit, can get some insight on that. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the, or in the comment section so I can respond to it if you have any questions about any of the gear, uh, about where I got the gear from, and if you're looking to pick it up, maybe I can give you a little direction on where I got that from. As always, guys, I appreciate the support from the videos. If you guys could, give me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.